Uh, I do, um, just to let everybody know that wasn't on to begin with, I do have, can you hear me? Ken, you're messing with your earphones. Okay. Um, I have a puppy, a 10 week old puppy, so she's making a lot of noise out there if you hear anything else. And I have never given a tech talk before. I've given other ones and to have to follow Michaela, who just did a great job. Um, and Mayo, a little bit nervous, but anyway, just bear with me. And I'm doing some stuff live on here too. So let me know if the screenshots don't render correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so um, let me pull up the correct one. Here we go. All right, this is the presentation. Um, and basically, uh, I just did kind of a Ruby Mine versus the Sublime text since we all work with Sublime. Um, and wanted to talk about the differences and the benefits of using an IDE um, or a text editor. And, um, oh, it's not, it doesn't like me here. So the um, text editor is um, basically for Sublime Text, it's a text editor, and it has, you use one screen, um, and you have to, I will show you. When I do Ken's, this is what I do a lot. I bring up my Sublime, I bring up my Firehose project, which isn't gonna let me do this here. Um, so that I can go into my resources and learn about the ATTR reader that Ken does. So I have my video going here. I have my sublime text here and I have to pull up my terminal here in the corner. And if you don't have a very large screen, um, this can get pretty, um, you know, you have to go back and forth a couple times and trying to make sure that I see everything that Ken has on his screen down here. And he also has the split screen going on. So, um, you know, it made me think that maybe there was something else out there. So um, my husband actually got me um, Ruby mine so that I could see what it was like. And I, you know, wasn't sure what it would do and how it would fit in with the, what we were doing. Um, so, there's a, there's a couple things about RubyMine. Um, it is a little bit more expensive than um, the Sublime Text, especially since all you have to do about every 15 times that you use it is click cancel. You don't want to buy. Um, so that makes it really nice. But they do have, um, you know, different pricings for different people. It's $99 a year for one license, $199 for a commercial, which gives you unlimited um, startups get a 50% discount on licenses and students, educators, and open sources can actually get RubyMine for free. So if you're willing to tell them about your project or if you still have a .edu um, address, you can actually get RubyMine for um, $0. And $0 is, you know, makes a lot of difference. Um, the anatomy of an IDE versus the text editor is that you have a console and a text editor and a debugger all in one, um, one, one screen. And I will show you the screens here in a second. A <laughs> um, couple advantages that um, RubyMine is it deals, and I'm just going to run through these really quick so that I can actually show you live what RubyMine is. It supports um, Puppet. It supports uh, chef integration. So if you're looking to, um, you know, add some cookbooks to your project or recipes or whatever else you need, um, it's really easy to integrate with the Ruby Mine. Um, it also does, um, it checks for the Ruby version that you're using. And if you're using different versions, you can see on this screen, it shows you. So, you know, sometimes a couple of the times we've gotten into trouble, um, well, I have, um, with pushing up to Heroku or something because my ver version wasn't the same that we needed. You can actually change for any of the, um, for JavaScript or for Ruby or for whatever, you can change whichever version you need to really simply instead of having to go in. So it's a really easy way to debug what you're trying to do. Um, and 
more benefits. Uh, inline variables view, you can actually right click in here and see where the variables are, how many times you've used it, where else it is. Not just um, when you click on it in Sublime, you can actually see it on the screen. I've watched Ken do it, and you click on card and card highlights everywhere. Well, this actually will show you every instance that you have throughout your entire um, program, throughout your entire script, and whether or not they um, have been, uh, your code has been finished, or whether you still have an open parent or open, you know, um, line somewhere, you didn't close a div, uh, you didn't do something else. So it helps, it, it, it keeps you, you know, in line. The debugger console is also right within the, um, the IDE. So instead of having to go in and um, in addition to having all the screens open, right click on Chrome and do inspect the element and see what's in there, you can actually inspect everything right here in RubyMine. Um, it makes it really, really simple um, and it saves a lot of time. And I know it's just, you know, four or five seconds at a time, but four or five seconds at a time um, you know, when you start doing more and more coding and you're making, you know, 50 to $65 an hour, it starts to add up. So you're saving 25 bucks a year, you're looking at a couple thousand dollars. And, you know, it just, it, it makes it easier. And if you don't have to go back and forth and you know that your tool is all in one area, it's very simple. I do understand why we start with Sublime Text for um, Firehose Project. Ken and Marco want to make sure, and you guys can both correct me if I'm wrong, want to make sure that we actually understand how to test, how to debug, um, how you know to make sure that we close our divs and that we close um, any of the attributes that we have out there. If you start off using an IDE, it automatically does it for you. And while it's really great, you don't understand always why it happens or that you can go ahead and do, uh, you know, a, uh, a carrot, uh, a side carrot, um, and BR, you know, so that you can close your breaks without uh, having to do a second break. That doesn't automatically do that. And why you can do that. And why you, um, you know, it, you have to line up. It also um, makes it very simple when you're trying to, to figure out where the problem is. It shows up on the screen, there's, and when I get to it, I'll show you, there's little places that show you all the errors that are on there. Um, you can actually refactor on uh, the IDE by moving an entire class. You can move it from um, within one portion of your script to another, through its own file. You can move it to uh, another um, entire script if you'd like to. So it makes it very easy not to just you know, if you realize that your code is now, you know, over 100 lines long on one, one page and you're like, oh, no, it's not supposed to be over 100. I need to move. I have too many classes here. It's very easy to pull that class out and it pulls out every attribute with that class and lets you know if there are going to be any issues when you pull that class out of your page. So it makes it really simple. Um, scratch files. You can put, you know, and I, I'm, I love to do scratch files and I actually do them on a piece of paper where I see what's going on. You can use the scratch file right in your, um, in the IDE and figure out, it's, it's basically, it helps with, it helps with testing. That's what I use it for. So you can make sure that something works before you actually put it in your file. Um, it also uses uh, editor config and it makes sure that if you pull in uh, JavaScript or pull in um, something from um, coffee or something from um, any of the other, you know, a YAML file or whatever, that the it's configured exactly how it was configured in your original file, that it doesn't pull it in and move it to whatever defaults you have set up in your uh, like for Ruby with a two tab. It doesn't, it does not do that as long as that's what you, you, put in there for it to do, if that makes any sense. And then um, we'll get onto the back. This is a distraction-free mode, so it actually makes it nice. You can get rid of the command line, the toolbars, and everything else that's on there, and just have the code on there so you can see what's going on if you don't want to have any of the other things that are um, going on. 
once again, it goes, it helps with the, the coffee script. It makes it very easy to do your style sheets. Um, very fast JavaScript because this is one of the places where it kind of cheats and helps you develop the JavaScript without having to add all the, um, you know, it, it puts in the, uh, the semicolon for you. It, it makes sure that, um, I know when we did uh, Nam, Nam, Namster that um, sometimes we did class, we had a photo and a picture and those were, if you had one in one place photo and one place picture, your program didn't run when we were doing, um, what, I can't remember what the controller was that we were doing. Um, but this would actually make sure that you didn't have those kind of errors on there. Um, Emmett is just, uh-oh, is that my little bell to me and I'm done? No, you got three minutes left. Okay. All right, let me get to the... Uh, there's enhancements for CSS, but let me actually get to the RubyMine itself. So, RubyMine. I'm just going to go ahead and open up um, one of the projects that we already have. This is my chess game that I'm working on. Um, now you can see, I'll move this down here. You can see that this is telling me that um, the database connection properties are not there. So I can look and make sure what happened to the database properties. Unfortunately, I switched computers on here because my other one was not working with my headphones. Um, so I don't have it pulled up in my vagrant environment, but that's the reason why the database is showing. It also tells you um, if you're missing any gems that um, you still need to run your um, program. So that makes it really nice because, you know, um, Sublime does not do that. Also, there are so there are very there are numerous ways for you to customize what you can do with RubyMine. Um, the if you look down here, I don't know if you guys can see this in the bottom right hand corner. This also tells you um, what your how your line separators go. What what, which branch you're on. You, when, you, when you first set up RubyMine, you, you set it to go to your GitHub account. So um, it, it automatically pushes and pulls from GitHub so you don't have to go out and use um, your terminal and it goes through Vagrant. So you can make it work with the Firehose project. It was much easier to not use it because Ken using Sublime Text just made it, made it better, but you know, going forward, I'll probably be using RubyMine um, because it shows all of, you know, it shows all the branches that are on here. So you're not, you know, trying to see, oh, well, Dave, this is for our group project. So one of the other people has an STI branch and I won't make the mistake of trying to pull in the wrong, you know, wrong branch or, or make that the mistakes on, on that end. There also, um, here on the in the project part, it tells you, I don't know if you can see this, but this says under the JavaScript that this is a JS file um, next to application.js. Each one of these shows you, like this says um, SAS on here. These are Ruby files. So you can see these are HTML files. So you know what type of, instead of just, you know, obviously you can look at the, um, the name of the file to see that too, but if you're looking, if you look just at that, it's a really easy way to, to figure out, you know, what type of file it is and how it should fit in with the rest of your, um, of your program. Um, there are, let me pull one up here. You can, on each one of the words in each um, file, you can look and see um, how many times it was used. You can look at the history. This will be the history of what I've done just on this today. So you don't actually need to, um, to it has a running, um, what am I trying to say? a running comment of everything that you've done. So if I made more changes in here and I didn't commit it to Git yet, but it was running when I first started and now it's not, I can actually go through here and figure out exactly what was done at any point during 
my programming, which makes it really, really nice because I know that I've done it a couple times where um, I've actually restarted what what we were supposed to be doing, and Ken can attest to this. I spent hours trying to pull in images on one of our um, on one of our um, projects that we were supposed to do. And if I would have had this in front of me, I could have seen where I had gone wrong because I forgot to do some committing to Git. This makes it very easy. You don't have to go back and forth. Everything is right in front of you. And I know myself that, that saving time, that's probably the biggest advantage of using an IDE over just using a text editor. Now, for Sublime, you can use it for Ruby, Perl, um, C, C Sharp, you can use it for basically any programming language. Ruby obviously is, Ruby Run is obviously written for Ruby and Rails only. Now, like I said, you can do the JavaScript, you can do YAML, you can do SAS, you can do everything with inside that, but you can't use, you can't use RubyMine to do a, um, a Python um, script, for example. Now, the company that does RubyMine does have a whole set of IDEs for all of those other things, but um, the one thing nice about using Sublime Text is that you already know it. So, like, I'm... After I finish Ruby, I've already started trying to work on some Python stuff just to see, you know, what, how well I can do that. And it's much easier to use Sublime Text because I already know how it works. I already know where to go to find the stuff. I already know what, what I need to do. RubyMine takes a little bit of work to get started on it, but once you start moving into it, you can see that it makes it really, really nice. To do it's really easy to pull up a new project to go in here and see what's going on you can uh, you know you can debug you can do all of those things uh, I could probably spend if you didn't mind listening to me talk over myself <laughs> I could spend hours telling someone and showing someone how to use this and there aren't very many good places I mean they have a uh, you can go to the tip of the day um, anytime you sign in they have a help here and they have tips of the day you can go through every every time they also have um, tutorials and um, stuff that you can use. It's all online, and I started to go into this, but you know, after having to do a couple of hours of listening to Ken work on uh, JavaScript, I didn't really want to learn how to do RubyMine with all this stuff. But there is a lot of information out there, but it doesn't seem to be as user friendly as you know having Ken in front of our in in front of you at, on the TV, but. Anyway, if you have any questions, I have been, although it doesn't look like it, I have been using it for a while. It is really nice, um, and it, it makes it, it, because it works with Vagrant, because it works within, you know, all of the um, programs that we use, it does make it really nice to try and go back and say, okay, how would this have helped me when we were creating Flickster? You know, it took me this long. And how long would it have taken me to do this? And it, even though I'm better at it now, it does save time. And being able to see your mistakes right in front of you, having it say, maybe you spelled that one wrong because you had class card here and class cardy here because, you know, you added an extra E. Anyway, I'm done, Ken. So <laughs> Good stuff. So does anybody have any questions? I'm sure there's a, a bunch of questions that everybody Colin has. is not allowed questions. <laughs> Um, and just to sort of uh, like a repeat sort of uh, what you said, um, if you invest time in like infrastructure, so like basically the tooling and the stuff that you use, it's something that pays off in the long term. There's different tools that you can use. Sublime is probably the simplest to get started with, like you said, um, but there's all sorts of different tools. There's the IDE route you can go, which is uh, like RubyMine, which is really great. And there's... Um, like the other route you can go, which is the Vim route. Um, but both of them take some learning uh, to do, but um, it works. Um, I guess, uh, have you used it ever to jump into certain gem files? Because I found that's kind of a neat feature too. So I don't know, have, do you have any experience doing that? Uh, I have not done that yet. Um, you know, between trying to do our project and all the coding challenges, I have not you know, been able to, I know that there's a lot of things out there that I haven't used. Um, and, you know, I was just excited that I was able to um, make it mine uh, without having to, like we had to, um, for uh, Sublime Text, you can actually make it so that it does the indent two spaces, but you have to go deep into the code to try and figure out a way to do that. So, um, you know, I haven't done it yet, but I, I will, now, as soon as we get off this, I'm going to have to go do that tonight. 
Uh, what's your favorite feature of it? Being able to see everything, being able to debug um, and have the console just ha have everything right there. So when I went back and did uh, the card, um, created the card to help me think about how to do the chess app um, for the object-oriented programming, it was really nice to be able to not have to go into three different areas. And it, it is really, it, it's nice, but it is really hard to, to have terminal up, to have the root sublime text up and have the videos up trying to go through and make sure that you know I've typed over your face and over your stuff a couple of times and you know the computer beeps at me so I think that's the best thing is that just to have it all right there and to be able to debug right in front of you without having to search and you know I don't like I, I do have to say I don't like the fact that sometimes it's telling you to debug something that you know you're adding stuff to later and it there's sometimes where it does a stop on you and you have to, you know, override the stop.